access level has recently increased. Excellent. <laughs> Incoming message. Welcome, agents, to episode 96 of Behind the Scanner. Our special guests tonight are Mark from New Hampshire and Kate from New Orleans. Welcome to the show. We have a question for our guests. Join us during the broadcast in our live chat room on our website, BehindTheScanner.com. Or you can submit questions through the YouTube Q&A tool. If you know someone who would make a great guest, submit their information to us at BehindTheScanner.com and click on Guest Suggestions. Subscribe to our channel and watch previous recordings on YouTube. For all the latest updates and news, follow us on Google+. And now, your hosts of Behind the Scanner. Wee. So magical. It really was. It's almost like, <laughs> like, 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 like if she was live. I know, right? It's like we have her present. The whole show is live. And you know, how long has it been since you and I have hosted the show together? <sighs> Too long. I don't think ever. Oh, well, then we better watch, they better watch out. <laughs> Anyway, hi everybody. Welcome to episode, holy cow, 96 of Behind the Scanner. I'm Daphne from Washington, D.C., and as you heard, um, my co-host tonight, my first time co-hosting, um, is Frank Martinez from Southern California. Shout out. Um, and we've got a fun show this week. Um, we've got the epic beard gentleman, Andrew Krug, uh, going to do the weekly truth and code of the show, and Kelly Colton um, coming from the introduction into the chat room. So if you'd like to also be able to talk with her live, um, please join the chat room at BehindTheScanner.com. Uh, in the meantime, we'd love to welcome our guests, um, Mark Schaub and Cade Rue. And uh, yes, glad to have you gentlemen here. And let's get things rolling by... You know, starting about the beginnings of Ingress. So, Mark, um, how did you get started with the game? Um, really just by chance. I heard about the game via a podcast I was listening to, downloaded it, uh, loaded it up, and had to really kind of scour around to find any portals in the town. I was on lunch break at work, and uh, I found one, and spent the rest of the day trying to figure the, the whole Intel map thing out, and I was, I was pretty hooked on that. Um, so yeah, it was it was really just kind of a, a chance thing. All right, so you started off with one, and Cade, um, what is your Ingress origin story? Uh, what do you remember from your early days? Well, the first thing that happened was one of my office mates had said that there was this new game, and you went to the website, and nothing made any sense. And then you went to Google, and then you couldn't even get into the story. And then so we, we went, you know, and downloaded the app, and uh, I don't think he, he really continued playing, but I, you know, did the tutorial and stuff, and this was, you know, in the early beta days, so it was slow as, as everything. And, um, you know, eventually, actually, just in the first couple months, I did meet up with somebody else in New Orleans outside the Supreme Court. We just just uh, made a chance to meet up. And so then, I guess in those early days, we did have a few meetups, but leveling was really hard. There just weren't hardly any portals. And it was, it was, it was pretty interesting. I mean, there was no concept of getting to level 8. Like, I remember when I got to level 7, I was telling Jimmy, I was like, oh man, I, I finally did get to level 7, but it's like the same amount of work to get to level 8. <laughs> and that, you know, I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> it was kind of crazy back then. It was hardly that any was kind of like the running joke, huh? That was like, hey, you got to level 7, now you get to do it all over again to get to 8. Yeah, and it, I mean, it would crash so much, um, you know, and it was slow, and I was on original uh, 
Samsung Galaxy Note, and I had extra batteries. I had three batteries, and you know, you, I'd be on a street corner leaning up against a street lamp, waiting for you know the phone to reboot, and then waiting for Ingress to load. And then there was that one day where Ingress all of a sudden loaded fast. Like it, it went from <laughs> taking two minutes to load to taking two seconds to load. And everybody was like, "What happened?" <laughs> it was <so> ridiculous. <laughs> And yeah, those are uh, early days were crazy. You both ways, and then you were barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, when level eight bursters, uh, when I first was able to use those, you, I couldn't actually use them because when they fired in the dense areas we had uh, next to Jackson Square, it would actually crash ingress. So it could only use the level eight bursters when there weren't a lot of portals around. <laughs> but of course, the level eight radius was huge back then too. So it was. You know, it went like five city blocks or something. Wow, that's crazy. I was I was just thinking of um, when you said the level eight bursters when I first started. Do you remember when you used to be able to stack those things? Oh, and yeah. you could have like the donut ring of death that just wiped out like a whole farm. Yeah. Man, those were the days. <laughs> but as with many things, um, it's always easy to get started, right? Getting rolling is kind of new and exciting and it's fun. But um, it's always it's sometimes a little harder to keep going. So what keeps you interested in the game um, as it's evolved? Um, well, it's mainly the community. I mean, all the friends I've met, and um, and just progressing the community, putting new things to keep other people excited, new events, social events, um, competitions, swag production. Um, I mean, I like all the facets of the game, so there's always something. I if I'm if I'm bored with farming or something, there's something else I can always do. So, are there any updates or changes to the game that kept you particularly involved and kind of brought you back and were like, "Yeah, this is good. I like it. I'll play." No, it I've always months. been pretty active. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much field agent, so you know, I'm playing on my commute, on my extra extended commute. On you know every possible uh, possible driving time, but uh, I think the individually things that that make goals for me is is obviously the badges, um, you know because you know oh this is my next badge so I can look out for my captures or my destroys or whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mark, how about you? What keeps yeah. you interested in the game and coming back for more? Let's say, just like Kate said, you know, the community is huge. Uh, I've just met so many people playing this game, and you know, it kind of starts out with your your local or in our case, statewide community, and then you start meeting people from the region, and it just kind of expands like that. And I think one of the things that I've really appreciated about Ingress is that it just the game is as big as you want it to be. Um, it's just kept growing with my interests, and uh, so it just seems like there's always something to be, to do, always people to connect with. Um, and you know, particularly for me, the uh, the exploration aspect has been has been a really important part of the game. Um, you know, being rural, not having access to a whole lot of portals. Uh, you know, the only way I could really effectively play the game was go out there and make some, find some new places. Um, so portal submissions got to be a really big deal for me, and it's still you know finding new places to go and explore. Uh, it just keeps the game new. Yeah, have the changes or updates affected your involvement in the game? Like, have they kept you around, or are you just kind of, I'm in? Um, I mean, I've always been in. I mean, like, as far as the portal submission thing, that actually kind of was a pretty negative effect for me. Um, I got, you know, I got over that. I think there's there's some reasons behind why they had to make that decision. Um, but, no, I think, like I said, the, the community keeps me coming back. There's We've just met. Um, you know, a lot of really good friends to the game, and, and that's always going to be the most important aspect. And, you know, big things in the game will change, but that's that's really, you know, those connections you make with other agents are, are what is lasting. And, well, I mean, you do get your sh fair share of playing, but, I mean, let's get into the small miracle of finding time to play Ingress. And, I mean, you've got two or three little miracles uh, that are calling for your attention. What? Yes! Dude, you play with a family? A family of, like, four? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, right? So three three under, under seven. Oh, dude. 
Yeah, so how do you find time to play? I want to see your superhero suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have a superhero suit, but I do have a, um, a trophy yeah. here from the kids that I am the number one best ingresser in the world. So, <laughs> um, Number one dad coming soon? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, the actual playing, you know, I think my majority of day-to-day -day playing is during my commute. You know, it's the time where I'm kind of not at work or, or playing with the kids. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of it you just have to think, think about, you know, how can you ingress but also, you know, spend time with the family. You know, I remember... <laughs> Back uh, my first anomaly experience, we um, had our youngest. She was only a few months old, and we strapped her right on and, and rucked her around uh, Boston while we were doing Helios, and she actually had a pretty good time with us. Oh. And uh, you know, we we go to a lot of uh, a lot of farming events and, and just get-togethers in New Hampshire, but we try to do it in places where you know there's there's a park to run around in. The last one we went to. Um, last enlightened event we went and got gelato and that was like the thing that got them like okay we know we're run walking around staring at the phones but you know there's that prize at the end and um, it's worked out there, there are enough other people that play with a family that there are always other kids at these events to hang out with so you just got to be thinking about you know how, how can you make it fun for the whole family right and Cade how about you do your kids have any interest in the game well, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and she has zero interest in the game. Okay. <laughs> because to her, it's a video game um, or whatever. She's, she plays whatever her phone games are. Of course, she has a an actual phone now because she got straight A's. Oh. But yeah, she finally earned that. So, um, But uh, mainly just, I don't know, whatever she does on the phone. Little little phone games like Covet and things like that. Um, Snapchat. Yeah. Well, no. Not, not, she actually Twitter, doesn't do much messaging. Instagram, she plays these nothing. little games like uh, they actually have a pottery game and some other games. They're, I don't know. You know, it's all those casual gaming things. Uh, yeah. my, uh, my son is seven and he uh, he's more interested in the game. He's level seven as well. And he um, he came to uh, Darsana, and I had him in the trailer on the bike. And then um, he didn't make it to Abaddon because he wasn't feeling good that day, but we did the mission day together the next day. So that was good. And he, he likes the game, but he gets he gets tired. Um, but he's always they're always up for ice cream, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Well, what kid doesn't like ice cream? I love ice cream. I've had some awesome ice cream in Denver. Oh, pro tip, if you guys are ever in Louisville, shout out to Sweet Cow, man. That place is awesome. That was like the best ice cream I've ever had in my life. So, anyways, moving on, for everyone watching at home who is hopefully not near Sweet Cow because you probably just bailed, um, you can interact with us um, live in our chat room at BehindTheScanner.com. Um, just look at the top nav. There's a little chat bar there that says chat. Um, fill in your info and join the conversation. Um, we're in there chatting. Um, I'm multitasking as best as I can, um, as are the other folks of the show. And um, ask your questions. We'll ask them live later on. All right. So what's it like playing Ingress in and around New Hampshire, Mark? I'm curious. Looks on the map like you've got some wide open and scenic spaces around you. Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, kind of going back to those origin days, it was pretty desolate out here. I think, you know, I had about a 50-minute commute and maybe 15 portals along the whole way and no no active players. So, um, you know, I think it's uh, it's fun being in the rural area. You know, you get to know everybody. There's um, It's a pretty close community out here. Um, there's a lot of just beautiful scenic places to, to drive through, um, you know, and I think that's been part of what's been fun about, you know, kind of exploring and, and submitting new portals and kind of building up our portal count is just kind of getting to know all of these places that were right here in the backyard that unless you've actually got a reason to drive out there and hack that remote portal, you just never get to see on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, I, I think, you know, we've explored some of the, the cooler parts of the state. You know, we've got the, the White Mountain Range up here, and it's gotten us into, you know, kind of mountain climbing and grabbing those, uh, those strategic mountaintop portals. And uh, that's been amazing. You know, uh, didn't really realize how much I enjoyed doing that, and I, that's really due to ingress, you know, getting out there and, and uh, you know, even did some winter hikes, which is something I never would have thought of taking. Picking up, but it's just been a really good experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Cade, how about you? What's it like playing in Uptown Nolens? Um, it's a mix. I mean, we have pretty good density. Um, There's obviously, be tons we, of portals like around the area, right? I mean, it's a lot of history there. Yeah, I mean, downtown. I mean, obviously, the French Quarter. You got like 150 portals, and you know, business district, and all the different areas around that kind of come out uptown from the French Quarter. There's a there's a lot of um, portals, and uh, even with portal submission cutting back, I mean we still we still have a good a good chunk of uh, portals. But there's a lot of new things that we spot that aren't portals. Um, we have a big effort to paint our signal boxes at the intersections. Oh yeah, we yeah, started yeah. out painting them to match. Um, the trees and things behind where you look, so it's almost like you looked and it just matched like camouflage. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then the artists started doing more fanciful things, but they say it cuts down on graffiti because they never yeah. get graffitied anymore. That makes sense. Um, Got to respect yeah. the art, right? I haven't seen one graffitied, so they, I guess they respect that. So. Um, Anyway, so we got a lot of those, and they kind of reached a critical mass because all the neighborhoods were funding the artists to paint them. Yeah, yeah. Have you found any, like, new places because of Ingress? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of coastal work. Um, so you do find some interesting places. Uh, I did not know about the Sculpture Garden um, down in um, the... Artifact. It's a uh, it's an outsider artist, and there's a sculpture garden that's run by Nichols State University, down uh, past Homa, yeah, yeah. near Dulac, and uh, yeah, he uh, he worked on it for like ten years, and then he just abandoned it. It's a it's actually the whole sculpture garden is really one giant assemblage of different sculptures that ah, kind of fit in one big yeah. story. So it's called a sculpture garden, but it's not. A garden of separate sculptures. It's it's, it's like amazing, but yeah, and his whole story and themes that run through it. And I've taken people down there, but I didn't. Uh, I had never been to that until Ingress. And in fact, the first time I went there, the agent who was showing me around was submitting them. There was no portals there. Yeah. So and actually, the something. same. I got to ask you one quick question because when I said that you were from. From New Orleans, it reminded me. I have an old friend that lives there, that is now in Ingress. Well, not now, but for probably a year and a half, an Ingress agent, and she's on the resistance side. Do you know Zelly Beanie? Oh, I know Zelly Bean. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Go way That's back. Awesome. I've known her for like I don't know, ten years. Yeah, she, she lives actually relatively close to me uptown. That is so awesome. And her and her husband plays too. Yes. Crack money. Yeah. Yes, that is so good. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, next time you see her, tell her I said hi. <laughs> I, will, I will do that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Um, all right, so in addition to the exploring and uh, the, I guess, helping your friends uh, submit portals, um, you've also been involved with local anomalies in New Orleans. Um, what was your role? Um, any lasting effects in your area after hosting? Um, I don't know if it has lasting effects in terms of the play. Um, I mean, I, I I don't think the way the playing field is the day before the anomaly has much effect on the anomaly either. Um, so I I mean, but it it does um it does let people come together and feel like they're part of the global game because they know their points are are um gonna affect that. But the local players are especially for the New Orleans anomalies, they're a really small percentage of the visitors. We only have 
a small core of active players in the city. All right. And Mark, um, inquiring minds want to know, have you attended or been involved with any anomalies that, well, I don't know, maybe you might have had some epic teammates recently? No or setup there at all. None. <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. So, Mark, unmute yourself. And everyone else, take a shot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, recently we had a pretty epic uh, Yo Premium team down in Orlando. Um, that was that was a pretty crazy adventure. Um, you know, we f we flew in on Friday, and then all of a sudden I found myself <clears throat> spending all night walking through Orlando, jumping in and out of lakes, and uh, getting no sleep right into the next day's anomaly. But um, and and we had a great team for that. I, I definitely can't argue with that. That was that was a lot of fun. Um, highly recommend the uh, the rucking for the. Uh, for the anomalies, that was just uh, one of those type of experiences that you just never would have believed would happen. Getting into something like Ingress, um, you know, I've, <clears throat> up in uh, up in New England, we've uh, done Helios, as I mentioned before. We had the Darsana one, and um, the Boston Flash Shards was also a pretty epic experience. It was a lot of fun, not really knowing what we were getting into with the whole new Flash Shard event, trying to figure out all these rules. Um, we had awesome representation from all over New England. We sent down a huge contingent from New Hampshire, and uh, it, it made for an amazing day and a, and a pretty epic after party. So, you know, I, you know, you're talking about lasting um, effects. I think, you know, it doesn't really change much about the day-to-day -day stuff. But I think what it, what these anomaly events really do are bring people together from the ingress community all over because people are really willing to travel and you know you get to meet all these people you might have worked with on these other field ops and it just brings everybody together as a community so I think the more you can attend the better I'm hoping to see all my enlightened friends down in Brooklyn later this month shout out now um, what about field ops uh, can you tell us about one you might have been involved in one of the many uh, that you've involved in uh, that uh, stands out from the rest yeah, you know, I mean, we've, we've done a lot of stuff around New England, but I think the most recent one we did, uh, Fire and Ice, uh, was pretty amazing. I thought that was that was great. We had, you know, hundreds of people involved from many states, different countries. Um, we had a pretty awesome anchor team down there on the Outer Banks. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was that was pretty great. It all came together, and, and, uh, and we fielded over a pretty good portion of the East Coast up to up Iceland. So, you know, I think the uh, the field ops are the other big way to, to really do team building and, and just get people involved in making something awesome happen. So I think for me, uh, aside from the anomalies, the, the fielding game is just one of the things that, that is just amazing about Ingress. Really helpful to know. And uh, I mean, I know even just from my own personal experience, um, Yes, you definitely have been a great teammate to work with. All right. Well, I guess it's that time of the show where we're going to talk about the weekly truth and also give away some codes. So this week, I'm going to be the person that's telling you what's going on in the investigation. Everybody else seems to be on vacation, getting ready for some sort of anomaly or Memorial Day weekend. So let's run down what happened over the past seven days. Um, some interesting things. Uh, Susanna Moyer was sent some sort of random clue or message that our players had to decipher, and it turned out that it led them to a mission on the UC San Diego campus um, with the promise of some sort of titillating intel that was going to be rewarded, and it definitely was. Uh, players completed the missions, and the intel that they got was that the power cubes that Oliver Linton Wolf sort of unlocked to help alleviate the XM drought um, were ones that he stole, and that seems to have pissed off a lot of the XM corporations, and uh, and I themselves are a little bit upset about that. And it also revealed, I believe, that the there was an attack on the Acolytes compound as well, and it revealed that Ada was actually behind it and that she warned Oliver Linton Wolf about the attack, and so he was able to escape. And they went after a particular cabin, I guess, on the compound in the woods that nobody really knows sort of why or what's there yet. Uh, 
There's some speculation maybe it has something to do with Jarvis, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, Ada and, and good old Ollie teaming up to do some crazy things and attacking folks. And yeah, interesting stuff going on. So uh, if you want to read more, you can go to the investigate.ingress.com website. Every Monday, P.A. Chapeau does a weekly wrap-up, recaps all these sort of events. Uh, Tuesday through Sunday, if you want to follow what's going on, uh, as well as get clues and intels on the upcoming anomalies and other missions that might be happening, um, check out investigate.ingress.com. And with that, we will move on to the second part of the slight intermission while everybody is, I see, chowing down and getting drinks. We're going to do the code of the show. Yay! All right, here. Let's you can't see. see me, but I'm already dancing. Are you? <laughs> Wait, oh, I'm please, happy, I'm happy dance. Now we can see you. All right, cool. All right, so with that, like every week, over my shoulder, magic happens. See if we can do it again this week. There it is. Wow, that last one was really long, so we'll leave that up there for a little bit. We have no idea what these are for. These are limited redeemable. We're not sure if that means 10, 500, 5,000. We don't know what they contain. I heard that really long one's for a puppy. For a puppy? Yeah. yeah. That, that would be impressive. I heard, yeah. What kind of puppy? Chihuahua, I don't know. Oh, no, I'm not going to admit that. If it's a chihuahua, come on, man. Maybe <laughs> like a Rottweiler puppy. Yeah, yeah, I heard it's going to be like a husky or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll lose out there for a little bit. If you happen to be in our chat room, uh, let us know if you redeem them. And let us know what they're for. If you're not in our chat room, you should get in our chat room because we also give away codes there for just participating and asking questions for our guests and just being fun, jovial people. So you can join our chat room by going to BehindTheScanner.com, clicking on chat up at the top, and then just pick a username and join it, and everybody's kind of in there having a good time. It's like a, I don't know, hot tub only without the water, but alcohol mixed in, something along those lines. I'm not sure. So let's see what's going on in the chat room, actually. The codes are going fast. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah it's, it's for a husky. Yep, someone's someone's a proud owner of a husky. That's all I got to say. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's you know, someone is a happy camper. <laughs> all right. So with that... Well, I will throw it back to you guys. Continue All right. On. Thanks for the goodies, man. Always good to see you. All right. Getting back to our guests, Cade and Mark. Um, I want to know more about your style of ingress play, guys, um, particularly kind of how it's evolved, how it's changed over the years. Uh, let's start with you, Cade. Well, in the early days, you know, it was all walking because um, that was what everybody did. And then as we needed to cover more area, there was more portals. And it was like, oh, well, all these new portals and not enough players. Then it just became a driving game. So I guess around about February or March, I guess, that was when everybody kind of started to transition. It was way more driving. So, um, and that was fine. I mean, got mounting brackets and all that and good to go. I don't drive in other people's cars and play on the phone, though, because I'm so used to mounting brackets, so rental cars, all that stuff. It's just, I can't I can't adjust. I got borrowed my brother's truck right now to haul some building materials, and I, it's really difficult to play. <laughs> Creature of habit. You got, it's got to be your way or no way. Right. <laughs> nice. Hey, I can respect that. I've got my own quirks. Um, <laughs> Mark. How about you? How describe how your style of, of gameplay has changed from day one to now. Well, day one, it was mostly just me in the area. So my whole level up style was, you know, drive up and down, build everything up, link it all up, and then wait a week for it to go away so I can do it again. Um, oh, that was a brutal wait. I feel yeah. you. It, uh, it was slow. It was really slow going. Um, in, you know, for the most part, it's been it's been somewhere. We've actually got some some new agents in the area, and that's really uh, made things a little bit more interesting. I think it's it's nice when everything's green and you know level eight, but it too. So you know, it's it's been good to see those new players step in. Um, and I think a lot of it is you know more moved to the to the community side of things too. I think you know as much 
fun it is to get out there and, and you know go throw up some nice nice looking fields. Uh, it, it it's also you know good to be able to connect with the community and spend some of the time just finding out what other people are doing, helping other people plan to do awesome things. Uh, and so um, I think it's really you know as, as those connections have have formed over time, it, it kind of changes what what the important part to focus on is. So. I think a lot more time spent um, outside of the scanner than inside. Well, and you just mentioned a little bit about local community, and it is such a big part of Ingress. So, um, Mark, I mean, what is unique about your community? Um, a little more about, um, yeah, the way it shapes the replay. Yeah, I, Enlightened New Hampshire is a, it's a small community. It, we Our local community is actually pretty much the entire state of New Hampshire. Um, and it's, it, I say small because it's still a fraction of the size of like Enlightened Boston, who I, um, you know, I've also had, uh, I consider one of my, my other community, well, my other home communities. Um, but I'd say, you know, what's been unique about us has been very little drama. You know, I think we've really put a lot of effort into you know, just kind of rolling with the, the idea that all green is good green. You know, we're not here to compete against each other. Um, and really thinking about the agents and the people first. Um, and I think, you know, my, my philosophy about it is, you know, when you have such a small community and it's going to be very likely that you're going to be players from, from both sides when you're out in the field. You're just going to, you know, come across them. And, you know, I, I found that, you know, a friendly, good-natured rivalry on comms is... Uh, a lot more fun in the scanner, but also a lot less awkward when you actually meet the person at the next talk event. So, I, I think it's been, in general, that's kind of how it's been in in our state. And, um, you know, I, I really get along. I think everybody gets along cross faction wise in New Hampshire pretty pretty well. I remember the other year we went to throw an ingress themed birthday party and. Um, my wife, Marianne Abraham Linkamp, uh, she just invited everybody. She said, anybody in the state wants to come. So, um, you know, we all had a big picnic and probably had 30 or 40 people show up at a sculpture park to just kind of hang out and play ingress together. So I think it's been a, it's, New Hampshire is a great place to ingress and, and get to know everybody. Okay, you said that really quickly, and I just want to say that again, ask you again, your wife's agent name <laughs> once more? Her agent name is Abraham Linkamp. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, that really had to be good. That, that, that's pretty epic. Oh, I, that is pretty good. Aside from having to remember how to spell that, I mean, that's like the best. I, yeah, that, that's definitely one of the epic. Yeah, that's pretty good. For sure. Um, all right, Cade. So, how's your home turf different from Mark's? Um, you know, this is your local community and how it affects the way Ingress is played and how you guys interact. Yeah, our local community is pretty tight. Um, New Orleans is relatively compact between the river and the lake, so it, it's pretty compact, and uh, New Orleans just generally is a very small city, and people know other people like <laughs> like Zelly. But um, I think we also compete a lot. Ingress competes uh, a lot with the other things that are available for people to do. In fact, I mean, it's not just Ingress that I've noticed, you know, issues with his other user groups and things like that. It's, it's hard to have a critical mass. So we have a kind of small core of players, a few dozen. Um, and But we also have really good relationships with Mississippi and down the bayou. So the actual New Orleans slack, the Blue Voodoo, really extends from the bayou all the way up to, like, Hattiesburg and the Gulf Coast. Um, we we have a lot of members that I mean they have their own things in their areas, but they interact with us a lot. Not so much for operations, but definitely for for social events. And um, so we had a lot of people show up for November Lima and Mobile um, last weekend. Uh, of course, that was before uh, November Lima announced they would be coming back through New Orleans after after New York City. <laughs> but everybody everybody went out. I mean, it's a three-hour drive over to Mobile. It's not that bad. Um, so um, As an Ingress agent, right? Only Ingress agents say that. Three hours? <laughs> not that bad. Is that all? I got well, I was, I, was already, uh, I was already halfway there for a soccer tournament that weekend. 
So I didn't have that far to go compared to... It happened to um, be in the area. Right? Yeah, if I yeah. say to my friends, like, hey, man, three-hour drive, they're like, not fun, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own, bro. <laughs> Yeah, our coastal portals it can be it can be a good hour hour one way, so you be two hours to go deploy a coastal portal way down in Venice. That's assuming you don't have to get in a boat. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, no, you win that one. <laughs> <laughs> so for everyone watching at home, um or on your phone. For everyone watching wherever you may be, uh remember you can submit questions for our guests. Uh, we'll ask them in uh, just a few minutes. Um, if you're watching us via YouTube, you have to click on the banner at the bottom of the video that says be a part of the conversation. Um, from there, just click the square grid menu icon in the upper right and select Q&A. Pretty easy. Um, although I had a hard time last time. So, Kate, <clears throat> you've lived in a lot of different places. Have you also played Ingress in a lot of different places? Um, and Part two, uh, what's the best thing about playing Ingress outside of your home area? Um, I have played in quite a lot of places, um, but I lived in a lot more places before uh, I came back to New Orleans. When I was growing up, I spent a lot of time in England. But I have played, um, you know, besides anomalies, I also have played on business trips um, in Liverpool, Dublin, Bristol, Amsterdam, uh, California. So yeah, it's a great way to see things. Uh, obviously, European cities, it's a lot easier on foot. Um, but it's also a good way to, you know, sit at the airport while you're waiting for your boss who's coming on a different flight. Um, it's a good way to meet people because you already can have a built-in connection even before you land. Uh, you can get, you know, real recommendations and not rely on Yelp. So it, it's it's it feels a lot more personal when you're traveling. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Hey, Mark, uh, what was your experience playing outside your immediate area? My understanding is that when you first started, you had a pretty lengthy commute, so you covered some ground. Yeah, and... Um... You know, it's 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 a lot of fun. You know, we, we end up commuting down to down to Boston and in Massachusetts uh, pretty regularly um, with uh, with one of our daughters. So it's it's just such a such a typical ingress thing where you know I'll go down there to Boston for the day and probably hit two extra place two extra cities on the way in that I didn't really need to pass through, and then you know take take the most roundabout route on the way back and show up three hours later than I managed meant to get home. Truth right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean that's that's half the fun of the game, you know. It's just finding those places you haven't been to before, and um, you know, it gave me a chance to connect with the in my the Boston community down there and meet all those you know those great agents. And you know, we we don't travel as much other than you know kind of like anomaly stuff. It's kind of hard to pick up the whole family and get three young kids anywhere. Um, but you know, we did do. Uh, trip the other year out to St. Louis, and it was nice to be able to kind of connect with some of the community, and like, like Kate said, get some actual recommendations on, you know, what do you want to check when you, you know, when you get there, and here's some places you might want to, you know, if you've got 20 minutes, go go here, it's a great place to get some portals. Um, and it's just really fun to know that, you know, no matter where we go, there's a community of enlightened, and, you know, for the resistance, the, the resistance that, you know, you can connect to, and already kind of know people uh, in in places you've never actually visited before. I think that's a real power of the game. And, well, um, you were mentioning before about how you were the only player in your area for a while, but obviously, or I'm assuming that you recruited your wife, the epic Abraham Link Amp, um, to play yours. Was that before or after various awkward conversations of going your extensive trips to grab milk or who, all these messages that you were doing and I mean how did you get her started um I think she was she was pretty open to the uh, to the idea of the game from the beginning um, you know I, I showed her pretty early on that you know that you can submit portals and it was kind of a fun thing you know we went up the road to this like 
historic section of town that had like the first settlers and um, we brought the kids and kind of explained to them oh you know this is this is the first cemetery and this is where the meeting house was and so we kind of turned it into some local family adventures which I thought was kind of a fun way to get into it and so I think when she was introduced into the game it was you know less about just looking at your phone and more about kind of you know learning more about local history and stuff um, I couldn't recruit her right away because she didn't have a cell phone at the time. Um, so that was something uh, I got her one for Christmas, and then um, you know she kind of signed up from there. But uh, you know it's 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 been a lot of fun. I think um, you know if if you use it as an excuse to do stuff together, and you know to be able to talk about stuff that's not just the kids all the time, um, it, it can be you know a really fun thing that that we can do as a couple and um, you know I think it was it was interesting because you know I, I mentioned she kinda looked at it as something to learn about our area and um, you know as we got into it further I mean she's there are different parts of the game that appeal to her I mean I, she's much better at the community building stuff the um, the social aspects of it you know I'm if, if I had explained the game in terms of what was appealing to me it would have been a lot of time spent looking at the Intel map and spreadsheets, and I would not have recruited her nearly as, as well. So I think, you know, kind of finding out what appeals to you and in, in, in kind of playing to each other's strengths is, is the way to go. Right, All right. And Cade, your girlfriend also plays Ingress. Um, did you guys meet playing Ingress? No. She, um... We met um, before Ingress existed. Um, she was a judge of a competition for uh, application building, um, uh, uh, like a hackathon thing, and I had a team of, of four people, and we actually won that competition with our app. And um, you won the girl. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the bigger prize. Right? No, Come she, on, she, man. No, and, that, and then <laughs> she actually started playing Enlightened. Um, oh. and she specifically, um, she and her boyfriend at the time specifically played to play against me because oh. I knew them and they knew they knew I was resistant. <laughs> so they were like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna play against Kate." So that that was how that happened. <laughs> and is she still enlightened? Uh, no, she oh. changed. Uh, last summer we were dating for. Um, let's see, about four or five months before she changed, um, so that was, that was interesting, um, you know, I was perfectly happy for her to stay enlightened, I mean, she, she was the POC for, uh, Darsana for enlightened. You know what she um, was doing, right? Yeah. She just wanted to make sure it was the real deal before she made the switch. She's like, yeah. oh, no, if it doesn't last, I'm not going to make the switch just for any dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had um, she had taken a break after Darsana and gone to New Zealand, and, uh, and then uh, it was a little while after that. We just started seeing each other more socially, and... Uh, and then you know she was she was back in the full swing of it. I mean they fielded us a few times. We fielded them a few times. I had a few headset mistakes where uh, all of a sudden my phone was blaring out Zello stuff and uh, oh. <laughs> it was like yeah you know how when you recharge your uh, recharge your Bluetooth headset it just the the phone starts doing all your audio. Yeah. <laughs> yep yep it switches on you. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of headsets and audio, I'm assuming you're using your headset while you're riding your bike, because that's I understand you like to play that way. And oh which yeah. Because I'm also all about riding around. Like I think it's super fun. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of paranoid about that though, so I only put one earphone in because I'm worried about car traffic noise. Definitely. Yeah, definitely uh, headset, and I have a whole dashboard of mounted, you know, phone mounts and stuff on my bike, so. So yeah, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like these guys in Europe. <laughs> oh, these guys in Europe crack me up. They just, you know, they're riding along in Amsterdam with their cell phones, whether they're playing Ingress or not. Oh, totally. Well, I, yeah. I went to Amsterdam and I spent a week there, and you're not kidding. They're like, 
I thought driving and texting was bad. These guys are riding and texting, and it's like it's it gives me a heart attack because I'm just like, dude, you're like one foot away from ending up in that channel. <laughs> exactly. I saw a guy ran into a guy from Switzerland on Mission Day in Vienna, <laughs> and he had this. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's like a one-wheel Segway thing with two little pedals that slip down, and you just balance on it. I don't know what it's called. It's like a unicycle Whoa. thing. Yeah, oh, he's going along, and I'm like, yeah. have you ever fallen off that thing? You, you, it's, it's like a one-wheel giant skateboard or something. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly know. what you're talking about. Ugh. Truth be told, those are kind of cool. I think I want one. <laughs> <laughs> so how has like writing changed... Um, or helped the way that you play Ingress? I mean, is or better yet, is there even, like, an ideal bike for playing Ingress? I think it, well, it depends how many potholes your city has. I mean, we got a lot of potholes, so... Um, I have, like, a hybrid bike, so it's it's good enough so it won't... You know, I can ride on the road for commute or something like that and not have a lot of rolling resistance, but the potholes are still pretty bad on it. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it, I just so anything. I mean, you can get around quicker on the bike. Yeah, um, I've been on bike team almost every anomaly. Um, it's a good just squad. Just a, a few of them on on foot, but mostly yeah. bike team. Yep, yep. Hey, Mark, don't you fall asleep on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear you're a, a big soccer fan, Mark. Yes, I am. It uh, started following. Um, Back in 2006, kind yeah. of enjoyed the... How about uh, the those uh, 5,000 to 1 boys? <laughs> oh. uh, they, uh... <laughs> <laughs> For everyone Lester... who doesn't know who I'm talking about, why don't you tell them who I'm talking about? Oh, geez. Leicester City uh, just won the champ uh, Premier League in, uh, you know, I think they were league championship last year. I mean, they, they just came from out of nowhere and... and Totally unlikely winning it. Um, totally deserved. Any other year, I'd be really happy for them. I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan. They're number two, so we came that close. So I'm a, a little disappointed that they that they did end up winning it. But I think they, uh, like I said, they totally deserved it. Um, it. It's it's good for the sport. You know, it, it, if you if anybody follows soccer, it, a lot of it was dominated by like all the big clubs that we hear here in the United States, and yep. to see the little guys come up with the resources they had and and win oh, it totally. is. It's like a fairy tale. It's and, always uh, good to have a shake-up, right, of, like, the big power blocks and just, like, you get some little guy that comes up and then shows you that, you know what, eh, you don't always need a big budget. Sometimes you just need to want it more. <laughs> exactly. You know, it shows all the teams that have been struggling that it's possible. You know, if you get the right combination of managers and players and just go out there and do it. So I got to say, there's something very Ingress-esque about the little guy kind of punching above his weight class. That's kind of like the motto mm -hmm. of players, I think. A little scrappy people in Ingress, I swear. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, Mark, um, when Lucky Dragon, uh, Agent or yeah, Agent Lucky Dragon, Eric X, was on about a year or so ago, um, he explained to us the power of yo. <laughs> now, can you explain the new phenomenon of yo premium? <laughs> Actually, I, I saw that Eric X episode, and that actually inspired me to get into Yo. Um, so, uh, I mean, it it is it, for those of you who are not familiar, Yo is a revolutionary chat platform, a zero character chat platform. We just touch a button, <laughs> and your friend gets a Yo. And you know, there it's not just a Yo. I mean, you can double Yo somebody, you can triple Yo them, throw in a location in there. <laughs> And Yo expresses a wide variety of stuff. It can mean good morning. It can mean what's up. It can mean I just hacked a link out. Down. Field established excellent work. Um, you know, I think Yo Premium is premium Yo service. That yeah, I mean, I think it's through the magic that only Yo coders could fully understand. But it transforms the Yo into a fully realized intended meaning. So uh, it's, it's it's the next level Yo is what you're saying. Pretty much. I mean, it, it, and I think we've kind of used it to express, you know, our next levelness in ingress in, in New England up here. You know, if you're going to do anything, you do it Yo Premium. Yo. It's a full yeah. stack Yo. Yo. It's a Yo as a service. Yo. Right? 
Yo. Yo. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so um, we do have some viewer questions that are not just written in Yo. Are you guys ready for that? Yo. <laughs> All right. Double Yo. <laughs> um, this is actually, I'm, I'm really glad you asked this question. Todd Hanneman um, wrote this in the uh, YouTube app. Um, what, Nimble, you mentioned about exploring and everything. What's your portal count at? Or your oh okay your portal count. He was asking about submission, but I am actually curious about your visitors. So tell us. About um, it. I'd have to pull up my app. You know my visits are, are pretty good, um, but you know we end up kind of going to the same places over and over. So if I'm trying to, I think I'm at four thousand something on the on the unique visits. Um, the submission count. I got 298 before they turned it off. Two away from platinum. And I still had like hundreds in the queue. So that was that was a little heartbreaking. I was I was really looking forward to the day. Oh never gold. Although, exactly. You know what? I have seen those Google Plus posts of people who were given granted the um, ability to uh, you know to submit portals. So you I'm know. hoping they figure something out. I realize that it's got to be hard to, to deal with the queues they must have been dealing with. Um, if there's some kind of way they can figure out to crowdsource it, but I think it's a really important part of the game that if if there's a, some kind of solution, I really hope they find it. All right. Um, and Abhorrence asks, uh, <laughs> yeah, right? I guess you already know who this is for. Oh, um, is Very curious as to what the real legend thing means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a baby carrot, like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that, is that what you've been chewing on tonight? I was very curious. I was like, I don't think it's tobacco. But... <laughs> it's a oh, tea. Dear. Okay. All right. I should have had them filter those questions out. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Geeky the Smurf um, would like to know oh, also to the challenges of finding love in the opposite faction. <laughs> well, really, it wasn't. Um, I mean, we were already socializing a lot. We knew each other well, and we had a lot in common. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the the challenges are that you're in two different organizational structures, and everybody has expectations. I think uh, there was a difference in how I was treated in my faction and how she was treated in her faction, and um, you know, eventually she just, she just felt comfortable switching over. Okay. Um, Nimble um, Butler asks. Uh, actually, just wants like. You know, um, I hear you are building a gnome army out there in the western part of the state. <laughs> true? Not true. Um, I I can't confirm that. Uh, I, I, I there must be some kind of opsec leak because that's not supposed to be public. But um, you know, when when the time comes, he'll know. Okay, sounds good. And um, yeah, Blade, Blades Edge New Zealand. Um, yeah, we were talking about New Zealand play earlier. Um, but asks Mark, how would you improve the portal submission process so it could come back again and not result in nine month waiting queues? Um, I I think there has to be some kind of crowdsource element to that. I mean, there are just way too many players and way too many submissions. Um, you know, I think there's got to be a way to whittle it down so that, you know, the load is spread between a whole bunch of people and then the, the, the ones that are clearly the better options go up to a next level to be, to be looked at more, more closely. Um, and, I mean, I think they tried to do some of that with the portal appeals process, but I think it was still took too much manual intervention to, to kind of maintain. And, um, I mean, I, 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 I don't really see a model that could happen without some sort of crowdsourcing tier to it to, to help, you know, filter the initial sort of fire hose of, of I, I mean, as much as I hate to say it in terms of losing losing the badge, I mean, doing away with the badge would also probably help, you know, prevent just needless submissions just to try to try to get another badge up to up to gold or whatever you're trying to go for. Um, 
you know, for me, it's more about encouraging to get out there and get that new portal out in the middle of nowhere um, because you found it and you, you took the time to get it and it's it's, it's quality type of submission. So, um, you know, I, I think that might be some some incentive to to get better quality stuff. Okay. Um. Now, Rosalind's Raven asked a really great question. I was uh, <laughs> uh, very curious, too. So you have this very interesting logo on your shirt, but she's asking if you could show the back of your shirt. But, yes, yeah, like, can, can you show a little bit more? <laughs> Everybody's setting uh, me up for all this. Here we go. Get ready for <laughs> it. I don't know if you can see Can you see it? You're not in a sauna. Okay, win anomaly. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's the win anomaly button. Sometimes it doesn't work, though. <laughs> <laughs> Get stuck. <laughs> it's like the easy button. And what's the what does the logo mean on the front of your shirt? Uh, that's uh, confidential. <laughs> it looks like a marker that you put on the map. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a it's a pin. A okay. map pin. All right. Um, Ariel Diana asks of both of you, um, what tips have you received that has helped the most when planning field art? And since we talked a little bit about fields, I'm going to start with you, Mark. Um, <laughs> I have a lot less experience with field art um, just because we don't really have a whole lot of portals to choose from. So I think you have to kind of do it on a bigger scale out here. Um, so I would have to throw that, throw that to Cade. All right. We had done one one field art. I wasn't involved in planning it though. I was just uh, just out there under dispatch uh, control. Um, it was a cross faction uh, dragon that we did for an agent whose um, whose mom had passed away, and his agent name was XM Dragon. So. Um, we did the field art, but I didn't design it. Um, one of the other agents designed the the layout. But yeah, I I, I don't know. That's super challenging because I'm not very uh, I'm not very good with um, art. I do a lot of swag and design, swag design, but I usually have artists that help. I just do all the logistics and production. All right. Speaking of swag. Red Man 247 wants to know if you or would like for you to speak on the importance of swag in the community. I love swag. Swag is great. I mean, it, one of the big. I mean, I I like all the different facets of ingress, but um, you know that that's the real business area of ingress in terms of you know getting things in front of people, all the logistics. So it's it's all like the same kind of things you might do in the real world with marketing or uh, vendor negotiation or finance so it's it's all that same spreadsheets and planning and but it has that real creative aspect so I love that okay and final question um, yes I don't think our shows will be complete without this question anymore um, Kosh the Ripper wants to know from both of you how useful have you found towels to be at Anomalies? And given that you had mentioned uh, your participation in the Stealth Ruck, Mark, was a towel useful for you? A towel would have been highly useful for me had I not left it in the hotel room when I was repacking my ruck for the, for the event. Yes. Um, I, if, uh, if, you're, if you're participating in the, in the Go Ruck, definitely bring a towel and try to keep your feet dry. Um, you know, by the end of the by the end of the stealth night, it was uh, it was pretty rough. So, plus one to the towel. I'll remember next time. <laughs> All right. And uh, how about you, Cade? We have well, we did have matching his and her resistance and enlightened towels. Um, when we went to the Nashville anomaly, they were useful. Um, so uh, yeah, towel definitely. Good fruit always knows where his towel is. All right. Um, you know, we did get one more question. Uh, Rossum uh, wants to know if either of you are making any cool swag. So, Cade, I'm going to start with you. I personally have a couple things on the um, that I'm planning, um, one of which is an achievement 
series um, to uh, commemorate different achievements that are not actually rep uh, recognized in the game. Um, so not there's no medals for, for things like Intel or social event organizing and things like that. So there's nine of those things that I'm working on, but it's not really ready to be released. And then my team team has a few different things and they have committees and they're doing it all by themselves, locals, kind of without much uh, much work from me and those are awesome and uh, from one of our local competitions there's a um, awesome chess board that uh, is being made for uh, winners of one of our local competitions so I'm working on things plus my locals are working on things so it's awesome Nice. All right. And for you, oh, I'm sorry, one more. Um, Mark, are you a swag person? Anything that you are looking uh, to do? I am, I am very much not artistic. So, uh, you know, in terms <laughs> of actually designing, you had a hand in creating. Um, you know, Abraham Lincoln is really good at that. You know, she's, she's into making a lot of the team swag for the, uh, for the anomaly stuff, um, flags and banners and, and whatnot. So, you know, it's, as far as that goes, she's the one with all the skills in the family. All right, I look forward to seeing that in Brooklyn. Indeed. Well, it's that time for our BTS tradition. For better or worse, um, we give every guest the end of their interview 60 seconds. Uh, talk about whatever you want, give shout outs to whoever you want. Um, the floor is yours. So, Mark, why don't we start with you? 60 seconds on the clock. Go for it. Well, if I actually unmute, um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, just like I was kind of saying with the, with the team level stuff in, in New Hampshire, it's you know, it's all about making connections in the game. So you know, no matter what else you take out of it, I, I think it's important just to remember as you're playing that the people that you meet and the experiences that you have are which were really what are going to stay with you. Um, and so, uh, yeah, uh, I hope to see everybody in Brooklyn. I think that's going to be an amazing event. And just want to give another plug. If you're not doing anything May 28th, uh, head there. And uh, shout outs, um, you know, my wife, Marianne, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Never gets the end of New Hampshire, uh, Enlightened of Boston, the O Premium team, and uh, Team No Pants. Right see you guys. <laughs> Yes, I forgot about Very good. pants. Yes, um, <laughs> go for you, um, Kate. Your turn. Um, I guess I should give a shout out to my mom because it is her birthday today. She doesn't play Ingress, so she probably won't see this. Hey, but um, yeah, for moms. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to thank uh, Hanky and uh, Niantic for making us such a great, flexible, creative play space for us to have all kinds of fun in. Uh, my local faction, the Blue Voodoo, the Resistance Navy, all my anomaly friends, the uh, Resistance Swag Addicts, all the uh, my other Secret Squirrel hangouts, um, and I just like to say, when you play in Ingress, just follow the golden rule. You play the game the way you want it to be played against you. So that's usually what I tell my people: stay out of com. If you don't want insults, don't insult other people. <laughs> Wise but, words right uh, there. That's that's probably the best way to approach it. Great. Um, thank you both so much for being with us tonight. It was definitely a very fun episode. Shout outs and yo's to y'all. Yo. Yep. Yo. And, and, next week. and happy hacking. Yep, see y'all next week. Bye. Yo. <laughs> Yo, <have the> music. <laughs>